Ready Monarch fans, it's time for the Old Dominion Football Show with Bruce Rader and Coach Bobby Wilder, sponsored by Town Bank. In a season that will be remembered for its ups and downs, Old Dominion defied the odds and did it again. Down 28 to nothing in the second quarter, the Monarchs regrouped, and as they did in that incredible win against Virginia Tech, not only made a, a game out of it, but came back and beat North Texas 34 to 31. What happened? Let's find out. The Old Dominion Football Show starts now. I'm Bruce Rader along with head coach Bobby Wilder. Another historic win for the Monarchs down 28 to nothing. Coach, take it from there. Yeah, at that point, Bruce, when, when North Texas scored, there were four minutes to go in the first half. And in the last 34 minutes of the game, we outscored them 34 to 3. And what got it going was we had the ball. They kicked off. We had the ball on our own 36. First play. Uh, Coach Scott, our offensive coordinator, calls a double move for Travis Fulgham. LaRusa throws a beautiful ball, 61 yard gain down to the three. Two plays later, Lala Davis scores, and just like that, it's 28 7. Defense gets an interception. Lawrence Garner, who had missed the last three games, interception. The, uh, we get stopped on offense, but we run a fake punt. Derek Wilder with a 12 yard gain, beautifully blocked. And then we get a field goal, Bruce, with no time left. So now, in the last three minutes, we've scored 10 points, momentum into halftime, and then the next big moment, Bruce, start the second half, three and out by the defense, Fulgham with another touchdown catch, it's 28-17, and all of a sudden we're rolling. You never believe that a game is out of reach, do you? No, and one thing we always talk about with our players is this mentality we have called play the next play. No matter what happens, the next play in the game is the most important play. And usually, Bruce, there's 200 plays in a game. Well, down 28 nothing. There had only been 70 plays. There were 130 more opportunities to turn it around, and we did. All right, your offense was not looking great at halftime, but right. quarterback Blake LaRusso, who struggled early, you mentioned his name twice. He went to one of his favorite targets, Travis, who once again came through. He did. Travis Fulgham in this game, Bruce, eight catches, 155 yards, and a touchdown. That touchdown I mentioned to start the third quarter that got it going. How about this, Bruce? In his last seven games, Travis Fulgham has 50 catches for 900 yards, a school record seven consecutive games with a touchdown. He broke his own record, playing like one of the top wide receivers in America. And Coach, look who's here on the Old Dominion Football Show. <laughs> Travis, welcome. Thank you. Thank you All right. Me. You came back against Virginia Tech. You came back to beat Western Kentucky and then another great comeback on Saturday. What is it about this football team? Our team never quits. It's, um, it's something we instilled over the summer with our training camp. It was a very hard training camp. I'm sure players wanted to quit then, but we kept pushing through. We stuck together. And um, that's what led us to have the, have the will to come back uh, against those teams. But man, you were down 28 to nothing just before halftime. What went on in the locker room that turned the tide? Well, of course, right before halftime, we, have, we had an incident with two of our one of their players and one of our players, uh, a player spit in the face of ours, and it was our happened to be our captain. It's someone uh, we rallied behind, and it definitely uh, got our team into the game. All right, you know, a lot of people don't realize, but you are a well-traveled man. You live in Jordan, in Egypt, in South Africa, and in India, and you didn't even start playing football in the United States until you were in high school. Yes, sir. Um, I took my first flight when I was three months, and I've been uh, traveling ever since. Unfortunately, there's not football overseas, so as soon as I, well, after two years I moved uh, to the States, um, I started football my junior year at my military school at uh, Massanutten Military Academy, and it's been uh, pretty good ever since. And I assume that you were traveling with your parents, because I don't think they let you <laughs> on an airplane when you're three months um, old. No, sir, no, sir. <laughs> he could have done it. <laughs> so you did a lot of traveling family-wise. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, coach, BMI is mm -hmm. coming to town for the 69th Oyster Bowl. We're going to talk about the festivities in right. a moment. But first of all, tell us about the Cadets. 
yeah. we know that they're going to bring a lot of fans. Yes, they, they are definitely going to bring a lot of fans. And first of all, for, for Travis and his fellow seniors, this is going to be a, a very emotional day, their last one. The one thing, Bruce, you always think about with VMI is, is that keyword military. So we've already talked about as a team the respect level we'll have for them. They're going to travel really well. And as you know, Bruce, a lot of Virginia Military Institute graduates in our area, there are a lot of fans of this school. I can't think of a better school to play the last game at Foreman Field than VMI. Other than Old Dominion, they're, they're the visiting team, Bruce, that's played the most games. This will be their 17th game that they've played with all the Oyster Bowls they've played and to have them for this game in Foreman Field is going to be special. Travis, we've seen a lot of your teammates move on after college, some into the NFL. What are your plans for the future? Well, hopefully they give me a shot to play the next level and that's always been a dream of mine to play professional sports and um, hopefully it works out. So in this day and age, when you're a college senior, you only have a couple of games left and that is your dream. Uh, it's not just a matter of going home and sitting on the couch and waiting for a phone call. What has to happen after the season's over for you to have a chance? Yes, sir. Um, as soon as the season ends, I have to start on a strenuous uh, strength, speed, you know, getting ready for the combine, uh, mm -hmm. working on my board work, making sure I know um, exactly what I need to do as a receiver for the next level. It's definitely a, a big challenge for me, but I'm ready for it. What do you think, Coach? You've gotten this guy in shape. Boy, he's had a really good three-year run. He has, and, and he was being really humble when he was talking about when he started playing football, Bruce. He, he didn't really start playing till his junior year in high school. He came to Old Dominion as a preferred walk-on. We just didn't have enough video. And after his first preseason camp in 2014, we put him on scholarship at the end of August. We went, there's no way we can let this guy go. He's developed each year. I don't have any doubt in my mind He's going to be a great player in the NFL because of the commitment, the work ethic, the type of person he is. All right, thanks. Well, safety Justice Davilia, coming off a redshirt season, is one of the top five tacklers on the team. But he's got to tackle the one-minute drill coming up next on the Old Dominion Football Show. I'm Nathan Epstein, back with the Old Dominion Football Show and the One Minute Drill. We have another veteran with us. It is fifth year safety, Justice Davila. Justice, the last time you were here, you actually said that you kind of look a little bit like The Rock. So I want to know, has that impersonation developed at all? Can you smell what The Rock is cooking? Do you have any impersonations of your teammates? No, nah, nah, not, nah, not that I can think of, no. I don't, actually. What's the last movie you cried at? I'm not gonna lie, the little sub movie before The Incredibles, I'm not sure if people have seen it, but it was pretty touching. What's the movie that you laughed hardest at? I guess I'm gonna stick with Jumanji, that's probably the most recent, yeah, Jumanji. What are some of your best memories of being on the Old Dominion football team? Being blessed to have a fifth year, I have a, a lot of memories, a lot of um, ups and downs, things that I've been through that I've um, overcome. I got great friends around me since the day I came in here, great coaches, so. Just being able to have that type of support. Justice, the rock, Davila, has passed the one-minute drill. Justice, say goodbye to the Monarch Nation. See ya. Have a good one. Coach, we hear Justice's name a lot when the Monarchs mm. are on defense. We do. J.D., as we like to call him, is currently the sixth all-time leading tackler in the history of the program, Bruce. And what's been really special about J.D. is he has had to battle through a number of injuries. You mentioned that he missed last year. He redshirted last year based on an injury, and even this year he's been battling through injuries. He's, he's played good football for us, um, had the interception at East Carolina that they did not call an interception. So he's played good football for us, and I'm really excited for him to end his career on a high note. All right, we're going to talk about the Oyster Bowl next on the Old Dominion Football Show. Bruce Rader back with Coach Wilder. It is hard to believe this is the last wow. home game of the season. And when it's over, the $65 million renovation of Foreman Field begins. Mm. Tell us what's going to be happening yeah. on Saturday. Oh, it's going to be really emotional, Bruce, because I'm already thinking back to the September 5th, 2009, the first game. And now here's the last game at Foreman Field. But Saturday is going to be a great day, Bruce. Starting at 11 o'clock in the morning on Kauffman Mall, right in the middle of our campus, uh, the DeLoreans are going to play. We've got a band there. We're having a fan fest, basically a neighborhood block party where 
President Broderick will be there, our athletic director, our team's going to be there. We're going to show up on the Monarch March with our band, with all our cheer squad. It's going to be a really big day. VMI's got a, got a party going on there as well. So Kauffman Mall is going to be rocking from 11 o'clock. Game's at 2. As soon as the game ends, Bruce, fireworks. We're going to have a turn out the lights ceremony where we're turning out the lights for the last time on Foreman Field. And then SB Ballard and crew on Monday. Here we go. Brand new stadium coming. Exciting. All right. With two games left, mm -hmm. three incredible wins. All three right. we're going to be talking about for years. we got about 30 seconds left. Mm -hmm. Where is this program now? Uh, disappointed. Number one with where we are, three and seven. That's completely unacceptable. So we've got a lot of work to do in the off season. But over the course, Bruce, of starting today, the next 10 days, we need to practice and play the best football in these last two games that we've played all year. All right. Well, Regardless of what happens, we know it's going to be a lot of fun. The funny thing about yes. VMI, a lot of their fans, a lot of people that went to school there, they're Old Dominion fans. <laughs> so I don't know who they're going to be rooting for. It's the Oyster it's Bowl. Crowd. 2 o'clock on Saturday, Old Dominion against VMI. We'll talk about it next week on the Old Dominion Football Show. Good night, everybody. Have a good night.